This week, we'll be finishing our unit of fiction and moving into poetry. Our final pieces of fiction will be The Way to Rainy Mountain by N. Scott Mamaday, Bless Me Ultima by Rodolfo Anaya, and Floor by Louise Erdrich. We'll also then be reading three poems by Erdrich. Born in 1934, N. Scott Mamaday is a Kiowan novelist, short story writer, essayist, and poet. His novel, Housed Made of Dawn, was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1969 and is considered the first major work of the Native American Renaissance, a period of increased focus on and inclusion of Native American literature in academic and popular literary spheres. His follow-up work, The Way to Rainy Mountain, from which we'll be reading an excerpt, mixes folklore with personal stories from his life. His work celebrates and seeks to preserve indigenous oral traditions as he explores the nature of Native identity. Next, we'll be looking at the writing of Rudolfo Anaya. Born in 1937, Anaya is a similarly foundational figure in multicultural literature. His best-known novel, Bless Me Ultima, published in 1972, was a key piece of Chicano, or Mexican-American, writing in the literary canon. Although the term Chicano had neg negative connotations initially, it was reclaimed in the 1960s and 1970s by Mexican-Americans as a way to celebrate a shared cultural, ethnic, and communal identity while rejecting pressure to assimilate. Beginning in the 2010s, there's been a renewed focus on Chicano identity focused on cultural pride, defense of immigration, and equal rights. Finally, we'll be reading stories and poetry by Louise Erdrich. Erdrich is the daughter of a Chippewa mother and a German-American father, and both aspects of her heritage are represented in her writings, which often focus on the intersection of Native and Anglo-American culture. In Fleur, Erdrich situates the story of a young woman against the backdrop of myth and story. Her poetry touches on similar themes of representation, heritage, and loss. Reading poetry can be a different and possibly difficult experience, especially if you're unfamiliar with it. To start, focus on the story where there is one. Who is speaking? Are there characters present? Where is it set? Then, just as in fiction, move on to the metaphoric and symbolic level. What is the message or meaning? What does the imagery or use of language tell you? Finally, read for sound and form. This process is where poetry really diverges from reading fiction. Traditional poetry uses very specific forms and rhyme schemes, but after the modernist movement took hold post-World War I, that largely disappeared and poetry became more or less freeform. That makes it more difficult in some ways, but also opens up a new way for the author to communicate. Think about how the author might be using the form of the poem. Is it tight and controlled? Is it loose and unwieldy? How is punctuation used or not used? How do these features affect your reading experience? How about the sound of the poem? Whenever possible, read the poem aloud and think about the language, the tone, and even the feel of the words. Does the author use alliteration or assonance? See the course glossary if you need to review those terms. Is there notable rhythm or rhyming? How do these aspects of text add to or change your understanding of the meaning? I've posted a quick guide in your modules to walk you through this reading process if poetry is unfamiliar to you. As always, you have a discussion board post and your reading journal. Also, don't forget that your first essay is due at the end of the week. Let me know if you have any questions, and happy reading.